Hey guys, Etienne Sun here from Sunrose, and today I'm hanging out with Greg Lee Gaming, and as promised, we are following up the top five best passes with the top five worst passes. And let me just say that this one was a lot harder to come up with a list on than the other one was. Um, the other one we had top five best passes was a little bit was, was a lot easier. Outside of the top three of the worst passes in the game, it became pretty difficult to choose the honorable mentions in the other top five. But let's uh, let's go ahead and dip into it. Number one or the first honorable mention in the worst passes in the game is Yun Zhao. And one of the main reasons why is because Yun Zhao's passive is very easy to avoid. Um, you can essentially wait for him to use it on a minion or anything and then jump in, use it on the tank and jump in and attack him. And the passive is one of the strongest parts of this kit. So because it's such an easily avoidable, you know, ability, that's what makes it one of the worst passes in the game. Now, it's not in the top five, but it is an honorable mention. Uh, Greg, what do you think about Yunzas passive? I think it's just too punishable. I mean, it's not it's not, it's not hugely trash, but it's, it's just punishable. You see him use it in lane, you've got a window of time where he's only got a flip. That's, that's pretty right. much it. I mean, if, All his damage comes from his passive, so if you're, you play around it. If you're then, playing a Freya, and you're salivating at the lips to jump on Yunz out, as soon as you see that passive go off, you just jump in, and then you're pretty much guaranteed to kill. Because he won't be able to do nearly as much damage to you, and he won't have that passive up for a little while, especially early game. Um, but... It isn't the worst passive in the world, but it definitely is not, you know, not that great. Yeah, there's a lot of people with better. That's that's the problem. That's the issue. Okay. Um, the next honorable mention on the list is Hayabusa. Haya, the reason Hayabusa's passive is on here isn't because it isn't a good passive. It is. The problem is, is that not only do only the this is this is actually like probably one of the worst even decent Hayabusa players still can't take advantage of Hayabusa's passive It's like the very yeah. best of the best Hayabusa's use it correctly. It's the reason why Hayabusa has a really low win rate um, Above I mean below like legend because people aren't people can't play him that well It's very it's difficult hard, so, You know playing around his passive which is which is decent But it's getting it off so you need to be good to be able to get it off I, I would I would guesstimate if I was a betting man that probably maybe at best five to ten percent of Hayabusa's worldwide can use his passive effectively regularly, and yeah. that's what I mean. What people makes can it... say people will say, "Oh, I can with my ult," but you know, what I mean, that's that's not where it counts. Right. It's being able to play around it in lane. I mean, how many times have you seen people stack four stacks? We I mean, sure you know how bad it is? You know, even with the ult, when I play against Hayabusa's, I've probably only seen a handful of Hayabusa's, like maybe four or five I've ever played against. That I've, that I've, when, when it happens, when one of them uses the passive correctly, I'm like, wait a second, where'd Hayabusa get all this health back all of a sudden from? And I remember, oh yeah, he's got a yeah. passive, because I never see it used. I so infrequently see that passive used correctly that when I do see it, I'm like, wait, what the hell's going on here? Like, I forget it exists. Um, and that's why it sucks. That's why it's, you know. And also, if, he, if he's got a high health and it goes off, it's pretty much useless. It, exactly. Nice. And if, if, a, if a really good Hayabusa is carrying the game, you know, he'll be able to go and assassinate people essentially without taking any damage. Yeah. So that's why the Hayabusa passive is on the honorable mention list is because it's not a horrible passive It's just very very seldomly used correctly or to its fullest potential So it's just a very hard passive to get off most of these passives on the worst and on the best and in between are all like You're gonna get them every game no matter what this is one where you have to physically like try really hard to get it to work for you And that's why it's it's on this list. All right now starting off the top five at number five this one is comes with a little bit of an asterisk. Um, so this is the number five worst passive in the game, and it's Cho's. And the reason why it has an asterisk to it is because if you're playing Damage Cho, which by the way is not meta and isn't really that great right now, it's a great passive. But seeing as 90% or 95% of Cho players play him tanky, when you're playing Tank Cho, this passive is pretty, pretty poor. The damage isn't great because he doesn't do much damage anyway, so he's not really building damage. And 
Uh, the slow is is negligible. I mean, it, it, you know, for the very best shows in the game, it gives them enough time to get behind the target and kick them sometimes. It's just, it isn't that great. All in all, the passive doesn't give you very much. We're talking compared to people like, you know, Lolita, Cyclops, Aurora, whose passives do some kind of, like, game-changing thing. Cho's passive, you know, increases his basic attack damage from a little bit to a little bit more and gives a very small slow. So, I mean, what are your thoughts, Greg? I mean, you got to think of his whole kit, his passive, definitely the, the most underwhelming thing. Oh, hands down. I remember, I remember the time where it used to be one of the best passives in the game. Oh and it had a stun. You guys I'm, haven't, you, you, know? guys, <laughs> you guys haven't seen my Cho guides and all my Cho videos. That was when playing damage Cho was legit because not only did it add 200% damage to your base attack, but it also stunned them for uh, like three quarters of a second, and it was insanely powerful. You trade a yeah, garbage slow for a stun, out. and then we're we're in business. Yeah. Like, that was ridiculous. You could you dash in, punch them to stun. You'd use your first ability, knock them up, kick them, and then by the time they've landed, you dash again and you punch them again and stun them again. Yeah. That was that was ridiculous. That was like infinite CC. It was infinite CC. It was beautiful. It was just beautiful, and I missed it. But um, Cho coming in at number five on the worst passers in the game. And coming in at number four is a little squirrel girl, raccoon girl, whatever you want to call her, Nana. Nana's passive is simple. When she hits enemies with an ability, she gets an attack speed buff of 10%, stacking up to 20%. So at best, Nana's passive is like having a pair of boots on. At yeah. worst, it's nothing. But it's not even that. Like, it's not even, even a boots, 20%. I don't, like, I don't know, I don't think it is. Cool. Uh, Full movement speed, maybe that's a decent passive, but even then, all it is is just movement speed. You compare it to all the damage passives and all the things that give you the stuns. CC passives and cooldown reduction passives, yeah. and then she can try to little squirrel feet a little quicker. Big deal. Um, so she can run into die quicker. The that's, only reason, the only reason she's not number one on this list is because there's three passives that are worse than hers. Remember when I said it was difficult to choose outside of the top three? Cancel that. It was difficult to choose outside of the top four because she was a pretty <laughs> easy choice on this list too. Um, I mean, I don't even need to say too much about the Nana thing. Nana's passive is just garbage. It's movement speed is great, but as a passive, taking up what other people have as hard CC, crazy yeah. true damage, health, and all this crazy stuff, she gets a little bit faster. And it's it's it, the funny thing about it is that movement speed on a different hero might mean a lot more, but on Nana, it's not even like it doesn't even fit her kit. It doesn't actually make any sense on her to have extra movement speed. She's the mage. Yeah. She could be ADC, but even as an ADC. You're using movement speed mostly to like get in and get out. I don't know. It's just what's worse. It's, it's only on abilities. Give it on the autos. That might make it. That might. Decent. Yeah, it would definitely make it better. I don't know about yeah. how good. Give it thirty anyway. percent and give it on her uh, auto attacks as well. And then then she can and then she's and then she's not even gonna be a mage anymore. She's going yeah, straight into support. Um, support. That's what she build. But anyways. Support. And then you could zip around, you know, saving people with polymorph and Do little squ your squirrel well. abilities. But, um, yeah. <clears throat> let's see. Okay, so Nana, number four on the list. Coming in at number three is the big, lovable, soon to be buffed panda bear, Akai. Number three on our list. And Akai's passive is, I mean, just for lack of better terms, wildly, wildly underwhelming. Uh, all attacks deal 2% extra damage, 2% uh, of the maximum HP is damage. Here's the deal it never adds up to much, guys. Even if you build like 100%. all health items, which you shouldn't, by the way, because that's not the way to build any any tank or any hero. Period. It's nothing. I mean, it's like 28 damage at the beginning of the game. 28 at the beginning but, of the game. Not. I don't even know if it's even that. But late game, it, even it, late it, game, you're talking about 150 damage. Um, just not very much. 150 damage, and you compare that to like Alfred as 150 true damage. Maybe 200 damage. Every two attacks. And that's like at the start of the game. That's the start of the game. Uh, late game, yeah. that true damage is like a quarter of your effing health. I mean, so you, you gotta wait for. I mean, I played him as like a full HP type damage thing with like ice force and all this. But just, oh, just, uh, I think I think because of his that. abilities and his stuff like that, you see that passive and you go, man, I'm gonna play him all HP. You get to like twelve thousand health, and you're like, yeah, now we're rolling. And then you hit somebody and go, oh wait, this isn't that good. This isn't really doing much. 
and then you realize, okay, this actually is kind of worthless. Like, it deserves to be number three on the worst passes in the game. Yeah, no, no one plays him for his passive. Everyone plays him just for the ball and the jump. Just for the one, yeah, for the, for the. I mean, yeah. all three abilities in tandem work correctly are good because you got the shield, you got the, you got the jump, the ridiculously long jump, and you got the ball, which is a pretty cool ability. Um, it's not great. It isn't any better than. It's actually worse than Minotaurs and Tigreals and pretty much every other tanks, but. It is what it is. Um, Akai number three on the worst passes in the game. Coming in at number two, uh, for those of you who know who I do like and dislike, you won't be surprised by this. Number two is Alice. Alice's passive, in theory, would be phenomenal. But in practicality and in actual, like, workings, it's garbage. It, yeah. uh, what and it does... I, I thought it was actually good, <clears throat> and then it's testing. <laughs> Yeah, it's just trash. We did some testing. Um, Cause what it sounds like, 10 HP per orb picked. So when you kill a minion, um, it says when a nearby minion dies, a blood orb will generate. Absorbing blood orbs will permanently increase the health by 10% for her. her maximum health by 10 by 10, which is a lot. 10 HP, you know, can add up quickly. Here's the yeah, here's the issue. Oh, four away, 40 HP. It's, yeah, yeah wow. five ways later, I'm gonna have like 200 HP. It's, that's a bit of an item, maybe. I mean. But here's the reality. We were trying to generate and get as many orbs as humanly possible, and 10 minutes into the game, we had like 200 health. <laughs> I mean, it was pretty bad. I, we were like, we were in a custom game just trying to generate as much orbs and gather as much orbs as possible. Not only do they not fall every time a minion dies near you, number one. Number two, they're not always easy to get to. Sometimes you have to risk getting poked yeah, down. Yeah, you're gonna walk up to that minion wave and pick up an orb but as a ranged character uh, as bruno's as kicking balls in your, in your mouth yeah you know? i mean like um, gotta get that 10 hp and take 15 balls to the face <laughs> right and uh and they don't stay very long they're gone quickly and yeah. it, all in all it, in theory if you if if they were like autumn if you like if they did drop with every minion and then they were automatically like gathered to you or even had some kind of like gather range where they got sucked into you would be much better but in reality even, even then it's one of those things that it's, it's a late game passive it's only useful once you start building it up and the games in mobile legends are a lot shorter it's right. not a uh, late there's game a game there's a game. hero in league of legends that has a similar passive where they continue to gain health throughout the game and it ends up being really powerful in late games but talking about 15 20 minute games if you're playing anything longer than 20 minutes it's a pretty obscene game and alice is gonna suck by then anyway so um <clears throat> okay so Alice comes in at number two and coming in at number one worst passive in the game and for those of you who know my preferences You know that she's one of my favorite heroes in the game to play But her passive is completely and utterly worthless and is an abomination to the game Freya Freya's passive spirit contact generates a sacred shield surrounding the hero with every second basic attack So it takes six basic attacks Six basic attacks. So let, let's just okay. Let's 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 rewind a little bit. Yun Zhao <clears throat> does a basic attack that essentially deals double damage. Okay, it does six little quick hits and it does double damage in one basic attack. It's, it's one point eight. It's one hundred eighty percent damage. Um, and he can he can do it every six basic attacks. Every six basic attacks, Freya gets three three garbage orbs surrounding her that do some very light tickly damage to people. Um. It, it, it barely hurts. I mean, even end game, this crap does like 150 damage per orb. Um, and it takes six six basic attacks to a hero who doesn't stack attack speed generally. Six basic attacks to get the orbs up because they don't do anything unless all three orbs are active. And then um, it activates. So it's also deceiving because it activates the sacred shield, etc. Guess what? It doesn't shield you of crap. It doesn't give you any <laughs> kind of shield. It's the most deceptful name in the world. And then um, it has no effect on means. It does hit jungle monsters. The best thing this uh, this passive does for you is help you clear jungle slightly faster. Take it away, Greg. Oh, here comes the here comes Freya with those balls. Said no one ever. No, we say that a lot because it's <laughs> funny, but they don't do anything. It's like, I mean, Freya's a girl. She's got balls. It's funny, but. The balls don't actually do anything. Like, I have never once fighting a Freya ever thought of, hey, watch out for them balls. Now, I see an alpha, and I'm like, if I get hit with two of these abilities, I'm going to lose a chunk of my health. Or if I see 
you know, a Lolita, I know, crap, if I, you know, if I run into, I mean, even, even like, even Cho. Cho's on this list, and if I see Cho, I'm like, okay, I know his first hit on me is probably gonna yeah, do extra he's damage. Hands on fire, it's gonna do okay damage. And I'm it. gonna be slowed for a second. Freaking Freya? Oh yeah, I'm going to be hit. I mean, those. What you guys don't know about those balls is that they're full of down feathers. It's like a giant golden pillow, and it gently hits you, and you're like, hey, I could take a nap right now. Maybe that's what it's supposed to do. Yeah. So it lulls you into a. a, a full sense of security as she activates the second ability and slaps you three times. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, and then she activates the rest of her abilities and you get melted and you realize, God dang it, those orbs were hypnotizing me. That's what it's about. They're hypnotic orbs. And the worst thing is, like, how bad a passive is compared to the rest of the kit. Like, the kit's ridiculous. Like, every other ability is super strong. I mean, and then they give her a passive which <clears throat> does nothing. You give her any other passive in the game, including Alice's or Akai's, and she is wildly overpowered. And maybe that's why her passive yeah. is so garbage. But what I would rather have is nerf one of her other abilities and give her a passive that's worth a crap. Because essentially she's fighting with three quarters of a kit. Look, I'd give her Alice's. Look, take number twos and put it on her and it's better. I don't know. It, it's, it's really confusing. Uh, but... Freya's number one on the worst passes in the game, and it pains me to say that because you guys know I love me some Freya. But we appreciate you guys watching the top five worst passes in the game, or most underwhelming passes in the game. And if you guys haven't seen it yet, check out the top five best passes in the game. We just locked that video out uh, recently. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, give, it a, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends so that you guys can help our channel grow. And comment below and let us know what you guys think the top five worst passes. Thanks for watching guys, and as always, till next time.